Hi everyone, thank you for joining us and welcome to this webinar. Now when dealing with childlessness, we could all do with being reminded about how to gain some fresh perspectives on our situation and then to think clearly about how we can create the life pathways that we actually want. Tonight we're going to hear some clear steps that can help us achieve this from Sarah Ellis. Hi Sarah. Hello. Now Sarah herself will explain her personal and professional background and why we invited her to share her wisdom with our MTL community at this webinar tonight. Now we will begin this webinar with Sarah's presentation and then we'll move on to a short Q&A session. Any questions that you may have can be typed in as we go. We'll visit them after the presentation's finished though. So to submit questions, simply hover your cursor at the bottom of the screen and a toolbar should appear. Click on the Q&A and then type away. Um, please make sure that you select the anonymous function to prevent any personal data being disclosed because this session will be recorded and watched by others later. Um, Sarah, I think we're just about ready to hand over to you now. So have right. fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just share my screen. Okay, perfect. Can you guys see that okay? Great. Okay, thank you very much everybody and thank you for giving up a very sunny evening. I know it's beautiful here so I really appreciate your time after what's potentially a busy day. So I'd like to uh, extend the thanks as well to the webinar series, The More to Life, for really giving me this opportunity to be available and share my story tonight. So real opportunity. Thank you. So let's get started because I just moved through my screen. Bear with me one second. Okay, so a little bit about who I am, first of all, and my, my there we go, it's working now. Great stuff. So a little bit about me. So Sarah Ellis, um, thank you for the introduction, Heather. So I'm currently a one-to-one -one personal development coach, and I specialize in supporting individuals on what I call their fertility acceptance journey. Um, a little bit about my background, I'm a master NLP coach and practitioner, and within that training, I've also done um, some timeline therapy and also a qualified hypnotherapist, which comes in handy for those coaching sessions as well. And also adds a, a little bit of a different dimension in terms of really understanding what's going on in that unconscious mind, which is ever so important. I'm also at what I call a reps level three. So that's the register of exercise professionals, level three Pilates instructor and personal trainer. So that was one of my real passions that turned into a, a work opportunity for me. Um, and that's something that I also do on the side today and, and really love to share that passion with others, whether it be on a one-to-one -one basis or whether that be in a class setting as well. So previously spent 18 years in the corporate world. Um, so learned an awful lot um, during that time as a, a global HR director. So kind of see that as a big chapter in my life and certainly learned an awful lot um, during that time and met some fantastic people and different cultures and had different experiences there. So uh, yeah, big part of who I am and shaped a big part of who I am today. And I live in, many of you, may not have you heard of Englefield Green. So Englefield Green is in Surrey, quite close to Windsor and Egham and a really pretty village and I've been living here for about three years now. And passions include traveling, exploring new places, walking, running, and being out in the great outdoors. So hence my comment about appreciating you're in front of your computer tonight when it's such a beautiful spring evening. So that's a little bit about who I am. And why am I here today? So why have I been having the conversations with the Fertility Network and why is this an opportunity to, for me to speak about my experiences tonight? And this is about sharing some quite practical examples of what has worked for me in my own journey of childlessness. Um, and I've got a lot of value myself from being part of these webinars and learning the different perspectives, the different paths of other people. So I asked to be involved and it, the, per, the stars aligned in terms of timing to really be able to share my story as well. Um, and if kind of the next one, if there's you know, one thing or one or two things that you guys can take away which are of value to you, then I think this is a useful session. So very aware that one size doesn't fit all, but it's an opportunity for me to say, this has worked for me, this didn't necessarily work for me, and it's a bit of a trial and error. So that's really my purpose and my goal for tonight is to share some of that and to really give you a summary um, and some takeaways as well. 
Okay, a little bit of context. So why am I here in the, um, in the More to Life webinar series? So my husband Rich and I, we've been on our own fertility journey for seven years. And, and actually when I was writing these slides, I had a bit of a shock writing, wow, seven years. That's on the one hand feels like a long time, but on the other time it feels like it was, it's still quite raw and still quite recent sometimes. And I know many of you listening tonight will perhaps had, you know, be in a, a shorter journey or have had an even longer journey. So, you know, appreciate that it can be quite a difficult time for everybody, regardless of where you're at in that journey. So we fell into that category of kind of quite unhelpful category as I describe it as the unexplained infertility. So we're still in that place um, today. So no kind of diagnosis, whether that be through um, various doctors, specialists, consultants, or our own diagnosis, whatever that might be. Um, you know, we've had all those tests and investigations and procedures, as I'm sure you guys all have. And yeah, they're not pretty, they're not fun, and particularly for the female, because they have even more, um, and you know, still with no conclusion. So there are still days where I'm kind of scratching my head around why that is. And yeah, I'm not sure that question will ever go away. Um, but that's kind of the journey we're at. And you know, and I purposely didn't want to dwell and spend too long on that because I know the very focus of this series of webinars is all around, you know, how do we move forward from that and how do we, you know, support and help each other on our own journeys. And so, you know, about 18 months ago, kind of felt we hit a bit of a crossroads and, you know, my words were, you know, enough was enough. I was carrying a lot of weight around and that felt heavy, kind of felt physically heavy and it felt heavy in my mind of that kind of trying for a baby for so long. And yes, the seven year um, period, I, I kind of had, hadn't dawned on me it was that long actually. And I kind of, I didn't necessarily wake up one morning and just say enough was enough, but it had been bubbling away for a little while. And that was when kind of we had even more conversations, my husband and I to say, do you know what? Maybe this isn't just meant to be um, for us. And Will we ever fully accept it? Will I ever fully accept it? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but what we have now done is you know, moved on to that next phase and next chapter, which has been incredibly helpful for, for both of us, um, particularly me, because I felt like I carried more of that weight. Um, and I'm kind of doing this with my hands because it kind of felt like I was holding a lot of that you know, big heavy backpack or something along the way. So uh, that's my analogy for it. And I feel a lot lighter. Good. So an overview of those things that have worked for me. And I kind of, I thought it was nice to categorize these because it wasn't until I stopped to really reflect what did work for me. And, and, and I'm not going to spend too long on what didn't work for me because I tried many things, as I'm sure you all have. But I, I put these in various categories and I thought that was a helpful way of going through and explaining them. And, and actually, one really interesting observation is that these things have helped me not only on my own fertility journey, but they've helped me kind of generally in life, if that makes sense. So it's kind of understanding I've learned so much more about myself on this journey. And these things are as important to me today as I think they ever have been. Um, and arguably, I've got more aware, self-awareness of those things that have worked for me. And I know when I haven't spent the time in these areas that I, I feel that and I'll come on to more of that in a little moment. So self-care, nurturing and nourishing, exercise, physical activity, looking at my own priorities, well, you guys can read them there, my own growth and development and then finding my tribe. So let's, talk, let's kick those off in turn. And so self-care and, and nurturing and nourishing. So the journal writing, and I know this takes many different forms, but this was something where for me, this worked as a kind of, an actual dump of all this stuff that was going on in my head, how could I get that out of my head onto paper? And I've got, I've got a journal right here actually, it's, it's always hanging around. I've got many journals and notebooks all around the house in my bag. And it's my way of going, right, let's get out of my head onto paper. And it acts as a kind of physical kind of dumping down of what I need to get out of my brain in order to move on with my day. Um, and one of the more recent things that I've learned about is it's sometimes called a morning pages. I don't know if you guys have come across that, but it's a way of it can be quite a meditative, I never say that word, a meditative way of clearing the path and focus on what's important as well. 
So that journal writing, and my goal is to do even a little bit every single day, or there are days where, yeah, it doesn't happen because that's life. But then there are other days where I spend way more time on that because I feel it's something that's needed and I need to just get stuff out. And I never ever show anyone and it never goes anywhere. It sits in that notebook. And the other interesting observation of journal writing for me personally is that it really, I sometimes sit there and read it and go, wow, have I actually just written that? Or what I don't then realize until later is that the same themes and the same things are coming out. So almost it can sometimes be quite an unconscious process of what I'm writing. And that in itself is really quite therapeutic and has been really beneficial um, for me. So never plan to share any of that stuff with anyone. That's for my own personal um, notes. And yeah, someone would probably think I was a little bit crazy if they did ever read that stuff. But it can be good, bad, ugly, indifferent, whatever it is, whatever's on my mind. And then the gratitude diary, very closely aligned to this. Particularly if I had a, a bad day, a strange interaction with someone, something, or I'm just in that weird place where my mind, when I'm not in my best place. And it's a, right, what, what are the good things that are going on? And very quickly, you can start small and you already start to shift and change your mood. Um, and that's worked for me massively. And there's a lot out there on social media, Instagram, and all the various things about the science behind gratitude. And I think even if you're having a particularly bad day, it can be, a, it can be you have to dig quite deep to find some of those things that you're really grateful for. But actually, once you start, it's a real quite mindful process. And you're like, yeah, actually, right. I'm kind of move on and work from that. And you can always find something that you're really, really grateful for. And then taking note of my own language. And this was more around stopping, listening, checking in on what was important to me. I found myself, um, and I've summarized it here, is what do I want to do versus what do I should do? And they come from two very, very different places. And I use this a lot in my coaching when I'm listening to other people's language as well. So maybe just take note yourself because what you want to do feels very easy, it's very energizing, it's very inspiring, it feels like zero effort at all. What you should do, I don't know about you guys, but I get that kind of nagging feeling. It's like, oh, I know I should do this, but I don't really want to. And so it was about not only listening to my language, but actually then following through. Why, what is it I want to do and how do I do more of it? And why should I do something? Who's telling me I have to do something? And it was interesting to really make those distinctions. And then this is a, um, this kind of whole concept of an inner critic and an inner mentor. Um, I got this from reading a fabulous book, a lady called Tara Moore. And she wrote a book around, I think it was called Playing Big. And this was, again, it's a similar notion of listening into your language and what's some of that internal dialogue that's going on and knowing, right, what are the times I'm being really, really tough on myself and, oh my God, I can't believe you've done that. You should know this, blah, 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 versus a, actually, let's be a little bit kinder to myself, which was the inner mental voice. And again, I could pause to stop and reflect on, okay, what voice am I hearing? We've all got those voices, that internal dialogue that's going on in our head. Is it supporting us? And is it serving us well? Or is it sabotaging us? And I was... I'm becoming much more familiar with that in terms of what voice am I hearing? They both serve a purpose, but it's about which one you choose to listen to the most. And that really had a beneficial impact on my overall well-being and, and where I was focusing my time and, and generally just being kind to myself as well. And then similarly around the kind of my third point here about what I want versus what I should do. This is really important for me about where I spend my time and with whom. And also, I felt often an obligation to spend time with lots of people because that's what I've always done in the past. It was actually, it's about recognizing when I needed to be with people, when I need to be alone, or when I need to be with a certain type of person as well. So it's knowing what did I need at that point? Who did I need? And it was really, really important to really be quite choosy about my time because it's so precious. It's the one thing that, well, you can kind of control your energy. Time is another factor, but I felt that my energy was endless if I chose my time wisely and spent it with um, the people that I really wanted to rather than those who I should do. 
and then generally nutrition and knowing what works for me and this is the classic one size doesn't fit all but i know i absolutely feel my best when you know i've done all the things that uh, we all know that are good for us by kind of eating healthily if i eat junk food and a ton of sugar which yep I, we all do at times i feel rubbish inside and i know that has a massive impact on me and i know my kind of limits on alcohol most of the time um but also even the little things like i absolutely love having a gin and tonic that makes me feel a whole lot better than glasses of wine for example because wine sends me a little bit crazy so that's my uh one personal reflection on that and then just again on the notion of being very kind to yourself around having some treatments and things just for you i did a lot of these things in my own fertility journey because everyone told me oh my friend did reflexology it was great it helped her and acupuncture helped her and i enjoyed it but i'd taken almost almost lost the sense of why i was doing it and the joy was all around to try and relax me and all of those things um because i was focused on right trying to conceive whereas for i really enjoy those things now for in a whole different way i've got to kind of reframe why i like to enjoy those types of treatments um, and other alternative therapies as well and it's really about taking time out for relaxing and you know whatever benefits you may personally get from them so that was kind of the bucket around self-care nurturing and nourishing and then if i focus on physical activity and exercise overall a big one for me was getting out in nature and i know this is a again lots of science around that i've seen a lot of things on social media about you know simply being by rivers fresh air seeing the greenery that can actually have a, a kind of physical impact a positive impact on you and i know that that's so true for myself so it's just being outdoors particularly if you've got office jobs like i had for many many years before there's nothing better than just being free and feeling like you're in the great outdoors and that was something that worked for me and walking um, sometimes walking with purpose um, one of my favorite things to do is is to go on kind of walking holidays and take on various challenges sometimes just getting out and almost using it as a bit of a pattern interrupt a bit of a break in the thinking which i do too much of at times um, and so that time out walking just reshifts your focus and being quite mindful where possible to do that and then running as well not for everybody but running is a kind of light i call it a lifesaver for me it's a, something i've done for probably 10 plus years um, quite sporadic with it sometimes i'm kind of out for i don't run for a week or so and that sends me a little bit crazy other times i go out a few times a week might be a mile or two here and it could be a, a longer run half marathon or so um, another time again just depends on what's going on um, in my life sometimes i like the music to keep me energized and pumped other times it's just fully immersing myself in that nature as well in pilates and yoga sometimes it's just something that you need and i can't be bothered to go for a run it feels like too much effort but sometimes i just need to move a bit and just get kind of the blood flowing around my body to feel a little bit um, different to how i do and then dancing to my favorite music those who know me well know that i dance it kind of any opportunity and not a particularly good dancer i think i'm a great dancer when i've had a glass or two of wine by the way um, but anything that kind of gets me excited um, into any music, then I just have an urge to dance and that just immediately makes me feel better. Um, and then just try new options and challenges to keep me focused and motivated. So I mentioned about the running. I love trying new different physical activities. We did some horse riding recently, which I haven't done in like 15 years, which is fantastic. Scared me, but it was fantastic in terms of just trying something new. Um, and again, without kind of keeping that repetitive piece or without avoiding the boredom um, as well. And then asking myself the question, and this is a theme that you will see come up throughout this whole piece in the various categories is, what do I need right now? As I said, sometimes I cannot be bothered to go for a run, it feels like too much effort, or it's too cold outside, or it's raining, whatever that might be. But sometimes it's a, that isn't what my body needs. And other times, 
it will need a, a sweaty spinning class to kind of blast some stuff out, whatever it might be. So it looks and feels very different depending upon particular days, particular moods as well. Okay. And this is a big kind of theme for me, and this is important both in my work, sort of professionally for me and, and personally for me, just around the importance of that mind-body connection. And you know, our minds can affect how healthy our bodies are. Um, and again, lots of science around this. If you would see on the left-hand side there, Deepak Chopra, one of my favorite um, kind of gurus or quotes, um, this guy in this, in this area, every cell in your body is eavesdropping on your thoughts. When I first heard that about five years or so ago, I was like, wow, that's so true. Because I know I will have certain physical, they might be small, but have certain physical responses if I'm feeling a particular way. And, and we know that feeling when we're a little bit nervous or a little bit anxious, you might get butterflies in your stomach, for example. And that's, you know, that's a perfect sign that how in tune our minds and bodies are. And I started to listen more to my body because it can tell you so much. Um, and I think I used to rely maybe on my mind too much, but actually just feeling some of those feelings, they're telling you something. And I, I kind of, my analogy I like to use, it's like the warning lights on a car. And if you, <coughs> excuse me, if you kind of, you get in your car and that kind of light's flashing, you're like, oh, it's okay, I'll deal with that later. I'll worry about that another time. You get in your car the next time, maybe it's flashing a bit brighter or a bit louder. It's like a signal, it's there to tell you something. Then you ignore it again. And the next time you get in your car, your car won't start. And I've had those scenarios where I have not listened to my body. And yeah, it's, it's brought me to a halt and it hasn't been good. Um, but there are times where I'm now much more in tune with knowing what my body wants, what my body needs. And only you will know the answer to that. And I think this is really important in your own journey. Again, comes back to the notion of being really kind to yourself and stopping to listen. And then reevaluating personal priorities. And actually, you know, I've just kind of summarized that earlier point, you know, listening to your body and it will tell you everything you need to know. And I think that's so, so important in this. So, yeah, reevaluating personal priorities, <laughs> taking some pretty big decisions over the last few years, um, not just in the my kind of our fertility journey. Again, the language thing has come up. Where was I spending my time? what do I want to do versus what do I what should I be doing and I it was interesting and when I got challenged on my language through my own coach which I'll come on to in a moment it was a well who is this should who's saying I should do what um and it was interesting because I couldn't answer it I kind of made this story up in my head that I should be doing this and this is the right thing to do but actually when when I was challenging myself on that, it was actually very apparent that I wanted to do something different. So dramatically reassessed my career and life goals and, and that played out two years ago. Um, so that was a big shift for me and absolutely haven't, haven't looked back. Definitely the right thing because again, I was needed to listen to my body. I was pretty stressed when I was working in that crazy full-time um, busy job in the corporate world. I was getting sick quite a lot. It, I knew I wasn't being my best self. Um, and so I knew I needed to do something different. And I took a bit of a scary leap of faith into the self-employed world without kind of a big safety net. And I'm the best thing I ever did. So uh, that was important for me. And then decluttering. And I talked about kind of decluttering, using the journal as a means of getting some of that out of my mind. But there was, I, and this is an ongoing, um, this is an ongoing process for me as well, because I get so much joy about recycling stuff, throwing stuff away and asking myself, do I even need that versus do I want it? And there was a lot of things I wanted, but did I really need them? Um, and we live in a really small house. And so there was a practical element of that, of, of getting quite a lot of pleasure out of, you know, quite a cathartic process of getting rid of stuff. Um, but I found it's really helped me because, again, I use the kind of analogy of it's helped to clear the path. You know, I mean, we've all heard the phrase kind of a, you know, you, even like a clear desk, a clear desk in your own office or at work, whatever that might be. That makes me feel so much lighter 
and able to see clarity and and be better focused on what I need to focus on. Um, so that was really important for me. And I and I'm it's ongoing. It's ongoing. I do it in kind of spurts. I mean, I get a little bit uh, obsessed with it at times. <laughs> but yeah, I've got to make sure that my husband doesn't realise that I've thrown some of his stuff away too. But anyway, he might he may listen to this recording later, so I won't focus on that. <laughs> and then stripping back to kind of simplicity of life, which is quite aligned to that decluttering. And understanding what are those things that I wanted to do and could be really small things, getting out for a walk at lunchtime. It could be um, spending time or calling a friend, having a cup of tea, a nice cup of tea and taking the time to do that first thing in the morning, watching some trashy TV, whatever it was. It's just about acknowledging what are the things that gave me joy, however small, and to do more of them and to build them into my life. And so ensuring that was part of a habitual part of who I am. So it wasn't a, I have to wait till the weekend to do those things, or I have to earn them. It was a, yeah, this is now gonna be part of my life. And um, so they, that was really important. And, and the frame that's in my office, and I'm kind of looking over here at the moment is, you know, when you love what you have, you have everything you need. And I think that's particularly important on this fertility journey for me, because and aligned to the gratitude as well. When I look around, I was so focused on a kind of wanting something I didn't have and everyone else in the world seems to have that. And you feel like the only one in the world who doesn't have that one thing that appeared so easy to so many other people. It actually made me sit and think back and go, wow, I have so much and it's made me reevaluate what's important and you know it's given me a whole new um kind of level of joy now as well and you know feel quite emotional when i say that um but yeah so i think that's a really important point and <laughs> the bizarre thing is and i'm kind of smiling now is when you kind of get this hat on and you compare yourself to other people but actually they compare themselves to you as well like so many of my friends and family who perhaps do have children they've gone, oh my goodness, you guys are so lucky. You get to do everything that you want to do. You go on amazing holidays and you don't have these responsibilities. And, and again, you can never judge or assess somebody else's world when you don't know the kind of classic what goes on behind closed doors. But those friends um, and close friends and family, they've kind of helped me reassess all of those things that are really, really important to me as well. Um, and yeah, I've got everything I need. So uh, that's really, really important. Okay, so personal growth and development. So this has been a big one. And do you know what the crazy thing was? I'm, I'm now a, a personal development coach and I hadn't reached out, which in reflection now, I hadn't reached out early enough in my view on talking to those who could help me. And I think that's why I do what I do now today, because I didn't perhaps appreciate or acknowledge where there is value in sharing that with a trusted partner, whoever that might be. It could be somebody completely objective. It could be a close friend. It could be whoever that might be. But I perhaps didn't talk early enough about what was going on for me. I was like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, and kind of, buried it down for a long time. But once I did start talking to people, I was like, A, I'm not alone. And B, there are people who care and can help you work through stuff from a very different perspective. And it's the classic, sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees. And just reaching out to talk to those people was really, really important. Um, so that included a personal development coach. I will mention her name here um, because I know that she's, um, been so instrumental on my journey her name is Steph um, and she's been so important for me and, and I'm sure she will be listening to this um, session later on and also a counsellor that I reached out to many years ago um, but again different stage in my journey but that was really really important um, for me um, and then I also spent actually what am I interested in how can I reshift all this stuff that was going on in my head and it seemed to take over how do I refocus that energy into learning more about things that I enjoyed and was, which were important to me? So that's when I studied the Pilates teaching and the NLP and I did some running courses and, and various things. So I kind of took interests and hobbies to that next level and 
it gave me something really important to focus on and felt really proud once I've accomplished that. I'm quite goal and um, results orientated on a personal level. Um, and it was something that drove always, and I think always will drive me. Um, and it's something that it's not about comparing to other people, but it's something that kind of keeps my energy high if I've set that goal in the right area. Uh, my sister calls these, I call them inspirational books. She calls them kind of manuals. She loves fiction and she can't believe that I read all these inspirational books. Uh, but happy to share a list uh, later on uh, with Heather if, if it's of interest to anybody else. But there are a number of books um, that help me. I mentioned one earlier around playing big, Tara Moore, um, but always got my nose in one of those um, just because, it, again, helps. I really get a lot of inspiration from that. And then learned loads about my emotions. And this was a big thanks to my coach as well. And, and it comes back to the whole point of listening into your body and knowing right, what is it that actually is going on for me? How do I feel? Um, and even that second ago where I felt a bit of that emotion, right? What was it? What was going on then for me? How do I label that emotion? Because that could really help me work through it. So rather than saying oh just i'm having a bad day or i feel a bit weird today that kind of quite generic label or category it was a, actually what am i feeling and why am i maybe feeling it and it really helped me to understand it and then move on when i was ready to move on from that and i do that whether i'm having you know good bad indifferent emotions whatever that might be i think that's really important for me um, now now i'm going to spend a second to look at my watch okay we're good um and then learning more about my spiritual side uh, as well. And this was a particularly one that I've learned a lot from other people I've spoken to, from different podcasts, from inspirational books. But it's really helped me get more in tune with who I am. And that best, ultimately, it's about who's that best version of you? What are those thoughts? Are they supporting you? Are they serving you? And kind of what is this kind of bigger force around us that's supporting us on our own unique journey? Um, so maybe that's maybe another pop, um, another webinar for another day. So, uh, <laughs> and then just understanding more about my strengths and particularly how to utilize them better. As we can all have those days where we focus in on what we're not good at, but actually if you, again, a lot of positive psychology around, if you dial up on your strengths, you can overcome a lot of those areas of development anyway. So it's about acknowledging and calling out what were my strengths how do I use them? Because they take way less effort and energy to call on your strengths because it's what you do naturally and what are unique to you versus then spending time and focusing on all the things that you aren't necessarily very good at. And we've all got them. Oh, and utilize them all. That was my bullet that didn't come up there. Okay, and then the final category um, is around finding my tribe. I talked earlier about talking more and relatively recently, did I start connecting with like-minded people? And, you know, I, I, I haven't perhaps talked about this enough, as I mentioned before, and only very, as I say, relatively recently came across the Fertility Network the, and the broader Childless Not By Choice community. So powerful for me. And my goodness, what a welcoming bunch to know that you aren't alone. And there are days when you have can feel alone. And so, and then you also are very... I guess empathetic and um, humbled by some stories from other people and that in turn helps with your own gratitude because it's a everyone has had their own some really rough journeys and own very unique journeys and it helps you appreciate and empathize with some of those people and know that they're there if you want to reach out to and that's been really helpful and started to talk to friends and family and again sounds crazy but I didn't open up um, early enough to talk to those people because a, I thought oh they're 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 not they've got other things to worry about they don't perhaps um you know care about the journey and how wrong I was of course they cared um and so they were all really really kind of incredible in their own ways at being supportive and you know what I noticed when I was more open and vulnerable it invited others to do the same and it gave them that safe space to do so as well and kind of it's, it's a really reciprocal process because it opens the, the door for them too to talk and also know that they're not alone. So that's been really important in this journey. And yeah, what I, why do I do what I do now? It's because I get huge inspiration helping others. 
on their own journeys, which are all quite unique. And let's not forget the joy of pets as well. So I had the pleasure of meeting Heather's dog on the uh, webinar just before it started. He was interested in getting involved in the, uh, in the webinar. And this is my beautiful little cat, uh, Bella. Now, unfortunately, the story doesn't end well because she is no longer with us. And that was his own tough, tough journey um, in itself because it brought up a whole new level of emotions when you know, we lost her after a short time. But we live in quite a, a house next to a busy road, which wasn't good. Um, and so my plan now is to move out more into the countryside where we can get 10 cats, 10 dogs, whatever that looks like, um, because I know how much pleasure um, they give so many of us. And yeah, a really lovely experience. And so I think it's important that I also recognise uh, Rich, and um, this is my husband Rich, and the role that he plays. And so the picture to the left, if you guys are seeing the screen in the same way, this is when we were out in, in the park, so one sunny evening last summer um, on one of our walks, um, and just exploring. And then the next one, we look a little bit blurry-eyed in that one, that was on one of our holidays. Um, and that was in Malaga. And I think it's important to talk about him because, yeah, whilst obviously I felt like I had a lot of weight I was carrying, it's a really important journey he's been on as well and that we both have. And I think the thing that I want to call out here is, you know, did I talk to him enough? Maybe, maybe not. He's incredibly supportive throughout and has been throughout the whole journey. And he's had his own journey, which is very different to mine. And I think it's really important that we both continue to talk to each other so that we can remain that really strong unit and go through it together and I do you know I do feel very grateful in that we're one of the you know lucky couples where we feel almost arguably stronger because we've been through this journey together um, and I know often the guys can get forgotten in all of this as well and it, you know he's for those that who may listen later we do know Rich he's a super chilled out calm patient guy perhaps um, you know quite different to me in many ways and I think we've been a good balance for each other and his perspective on you know wanting he wanted children of course he did but his perspective was was how can we miss what we've never had um, and so he took a very different um, take on it and that was his model of the world and how he shared that and at the same time he was very empathetic you know when there was a time where we, we did lose a baby and that was really tough for us both because we had that you know excitement and that hope um, and I think it's just important to call out and recognize the role that uh, the partners play as well in all of this so anyway I've been speaking for a long time and you guys all must uh, I need to pause for a drink um, you're probably all enjoying a drink right now as you watch this so that just leaves me you know with a very quick summary of those things you know, there wasn't a magic bullet in terms of my own um, acceptance journey, um, and that's what I'm calling it. You know, it's definitely been a trial and error process to assess what has or hasn't worked for me over the last few years. In summary, it was about stopping, slowing down, which sounded quite counterintuitive in some time, in some ways because of you know the pace of life and the busyness of us all. So I was like, I haven't got time to stop. But actually, it was the thing that I needed to do. And it was a thing that I needed to kind of get back in tune with who I was, what was important to me, because I'd got so lost and focused on so many other things, which I perhaps couldn't control, which, you know, a lot of you will empathize with. Um, and what do I need right now? That's always a question I ask myself, probably daily. What do I need? What's important to me, whether it be on the exercise front, food, whether it be, you know, when I go to sleep at night, whatever it might be, what's going to serve me well? And that's a really important question that I think I will always be asking myself. And prioritising myself first and foremost, which I've already, I've already talked about. You know, only then can I have that clarity and mental thought. And I kind of, like Rich laughs at me when I talk about, right, I need to recalibrate. And what that means is that stopping, slowing down and what's important to me and what do I want to do? And then, you know, acceptance is probably will be an ongoing journey for me. Will you ever fully accept something that you wanted for so long? Maybe, maybe not. And I know, you know, as you evolve and life evolves, different things may become an important part. But I think it's just recognizing that it's OK that it will be a lifelong journey. And this whole thing is like I talked about my time in corporate has shaped who I am. 
you know, this whole journey has absolutely shaped who I am. And I've learned so much about myself in the process as well. And in a bizarre way, it kind of feels like it's been quite rewarding as well. So, uh, um, yeah, really important. And yeah, I feel really excited and energized about life more than ever before because I've kind of shifted some of those priorities and really concentrating on what is important to me. So I will hand that back over to Heather and thank you very much everybody for your time and really appreciate your attention this evening. Thank you. Okay, Sarah, if I just ask you to stop sharing your screen there and then we can come back on. Perfect. That's lovely. Thank you. First of all, I just want to say thank you for that presentation. I really feel that there were some really comprehensive, simple steps that we can all take. Even if we just choose one of them, there's something there that all of us can take to gain those fresh perspectives that sometimes we just need. Um, and we just need a little reminder to do that. Now, there was a theme that came across to me very much throughout all of it. And you actually said it on the last slide and I thought, oh, that was gonna be my question, but it doesn't oh, matter. Yeah. Um, what I was gonna say was a theme that really came across and I want to know how important you think this is, is the need sometimes to just stop mm. and reflect. Because I think sometimes when you are feeling pain about an issue, it's easier to keep going and keep busy. Yeah. yeah. But actually you mentioned the need to just stop sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's been a big, big important one. And again, it felt really... I'm quite, a, as I say, an action orientated person. I've got to do lists, I've got this. And it's always like, right, do you know what? I just almost need to pour, press the classic kind of pressing the pause button and then being able to say, what do I need right now? And I, had, I actually had one of those days probably about three weeks ago where I'd got myself into a bit of a, a fog. And do you know what? I had to cancel some appointments in my diary for that afternoon. And I had an afternoon where I stopped everything. And do you know what? I had a little afternoon nap. I just kind of got myself in a different place. And I had this big to-do list. I had calls I needed to do. But do you know what? It was what I needed. It was absolutely what I needed. I went for a little walk. I listened to music. So all of those things. But, but, but strangely, I almost needed to almost sit with that thought as well. So rather than trying to block it out, it was just needing to stop and going, what's going on? Okay, a little bit of journal writing, whatever it was. And so my mind on the one hand was going, but you've got this to-do list, you should do this, blah, blah, blah. But it was like, actually, I'm gonna get myself into more of this kind of spiral downwards place um, than if I hadn't have just stopped. And kind of next day, my goodness, it was like night and day. It was just felt in a much better place for having that time out. Um, and that was just one afternoon of a timeout. Um, and it, as I say, it feels counterintuitive at times, but it was, it was definitely something I needed to do. Uh, and that seems so important, doesn't it? The other thing is you talk very much about that clarity of mental thought. Now, not everybody might be as goal orientated as you. And I think that possibly comes from your work life too, that yeah. need to always have those goals. So, if somebody is coming into this from a point of exhaustion yeah. um, and they feel that the thought of giving themselves more stress by creating goals, which one of those areas that you talked about would you say would probably be a good place to start when you are really, really exhausted? And I know we've just talked about stopping and resting, which obviously would be one of the answers, but which one of those do you think should probably take precedence or is it different for everybody i think for me the one that sprung to mind straight away i think it's a, it comes back to being really kind to yourself and and i and i almost sort of rewarded myself a little bit with a maybe a reflexology or an acupuncture um or something like that where it was a right this is time out for me to enjoy and kind of nourish myself and my body and i think that's something that felt really good as well because it was a bit of a treat I felt that was a bit of a treat and I kind of rewarded myself with that so that's something on the one hand and then <clears throat> excuse me on the second hand I think it's sometimes it's about stopping but sometimes it's about just doing something 
And what I mean by that is doing something small that you enjoy. Um, I was with my nephews at the weekend and I spent two and a half hours coloring in <laughs> with my nephews. And it was not something I do every day and not something that I um, would necessarily do on my own, but it was just something I'm like, ah, oh, I feel quite invigorated because I really enjoyed that. So it was, it was doing something I really enjoyed and that will look and feel very different to somebody else. But that was just a very recent example of something that I took the time out to do. And, and you talked very much about the acceptance of the situation as well. And, and I know that um, Mortal Life have got a self-help guide that was put together with Cardiff University and a big theme that comes through that. Um, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, do have a look at it on our website. But a big theme that comes through that is the, the, um, your ability to accept your situation and see some good in it. And of course, you talked about the gratitude diary as well, which I think can very much help people to, to gain that level of acceptance. You know, mm -hmm. it's not all doom and gloom, although we have days where we feel like that, which yeah. is perfectly natural to have. Yeah. We, we still can find some positivity. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I work with, um, Actually, no, it was, I think I was listening to a podcast recently and I can't remember the name of it. And it was around that notion of gratitude. And you know, even in the days, as I say, when you've got to feel that like you've got to dig really deep to find what you're grateful for, this guy used the example with stopping and starting like, right, okay, I'm, a, I'm, I'm fit, I'm healthy. I've got both arms, both legs. I've got great friends, great family. You know, and it, once you start small, it then you go oh my goodness and before you know it if you write them down you've got this big list so it's about starting like okay I've got warm clothes to wear I've got a roof over my head whatever it might be and then you can kind of lean into more of those things that and it becomes very uh, very natural to then start thinking about that the more you do it and it becomes habitual and yeah laws of attraction it's the more you're grateful the more you kind of can get in return as well. And that's kind of more on that spiritual side of something that I personally believe in. Okay, we haven't got any other questions in there. So if anybody's watching and they do have a question, do type it in quickly. Um, there's just a few more things that I'm going to talk to um, Sarah about. So if you want to submit a question, that would be lovely. Um, okay, the other thing that you said was there was no magic bullet for you. So there wasn't one thing that sort of, you know, really, really helped above all others. Um, the important point that I want to make is for everybody the first thing they try might not work and you did talk about trial and error didn't didn't you but when you have been on a long journey that has that cycle of disappointment and hope and disappointment and hope sometimes it can be really emotionally draining when you try something new you invest a lot of energy in it and then you actually find it wasn't what you hoped for or you know so so that trial and error be kind to yourself about that is yeah. it I think the point I'm trying to pick up on. Yeah, and also what's just popped into my mind is a lot of these things that we tried were bloody expensive as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and that can add to the kind of disappointment. You're like, oh, everybody, so my friend said this worked or so-and-so had a friend that said that worked. And, and so you try it and yeah, these things are a big investment of time and of money and whatever it might be. And it can, it can kind of, add weight to that disappointment as well so yeah it's a yeah it's a journey it really is there's a few questions on there so i'm just going to have a wee look um how do you start with finding a coach okay so i think the most important thing for me it's through recommendation and word of mouth that was a big one for me i had been recommended steph my coach um and she was I just knew instantly when I spoke to her on the phone, it was going to work for us both. Um, and she got it. Um, so she provided that for me, a good coach is somebody who provides the space to listen, provides a newest perspective and also can challenge as well. Um, and to almost test and provoke some of your maybe outdated, limited beliefs or outdated assumptions, whatever that might be. 
Um, and so I think it's through recommendation and word of mouth as well. Um, that would be my advice. I mean, the great thing about coaching is that um, most of the time you've already got the answers yourself, haven't you? It's Absolutely. And, that's, yeah. and that for me is what it's all about. You know when you listen, but apps, what the role of the coach is so important because they perhaps ask, you're so absorbed in it, you can't see what's necessarily going on. And, and often the coach has to say very little and you're like, ah, oh, I know the answer. You always know the answer. And the coach is there more as a facilitator to get you to that right place. So most coaches will have recommendations that are on the internet, I assume. So would you read testimonials by other people about what they've done or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. There's a few a few comments on here as well. Don't worry, the lovely comments, Sarah. Oh, okay. <laughs> So we've got no question. Just wanted to say how brilliant Sarah has been in sharing such a personal insight. And I, I second that, Sarah. I really, really agree oh, with thank that. Thank you. I, I think your own experience and your professional background, I think the match of them together has made this a really, really interesting session tonight. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, and someone else has said, just wanted to say thanks very much for such a thorough presentation. Lots to think about. And there was a lot to think about in there. And, and we don't have to do it all at once, do we? Oh, and this is, and this is kind of my reflections over that whole journey. Um, yeah, and as I say, I can't believe it's been it's seven years and ongoing. So these are things that I'm still doing now, and I will learn to do more things for me to be in my best place. And so, yeah, it's it's a lifelong journey for me, absolutely. And um, yeah, good, bad, and ugly days. There always will be them for all of us, regardless of where we're at. Um, and I think it's a it's a very personal journey, and it's being patient being patient as well so well you've certainly inspired me tonight and I'm sure you've inspired lots of other people to just possibly stop reflect rethink and especially ask themselves what do I need right now so yeah. so oh, thank, thank you, you for that um, I think that's probably all we've got time for from Sarah. Um, thank you so much for supporting More to Life with all the preparation, the time that's gone into this fabulous session. I'm sure it will help many on their journey, as I said, um, to find those rewarding pathways that they're looking to create. Um, we do hope to have the recording of this webinar available on YouTube in the next week or so. I will send out a message on social media once it's ready on our usual website page where you usually register for these. Um, our next MTL webinar will be on Wednesday 12th of June and it's called It's Good to Talk and it is by the actor and comedian Rod Silvers. Now Rod is sharing childlessness from a man's perspective, but please note that we want all genders to attend as we believe you'll be interested in what he has to say. Um, really funny guy. Um, I would say don't miss this webinar. I think it's going to be very entertaining and fun and very down to earth. It will be really fun to watch. And um, the registration details are already on our website. So have a look at that if you haven't done so. Um, now, because of current data protection laws, we can only send reminders um, for webinars if you give us your direct consent to do so. So if you would like to receive a reminder for each webinar in the 2019 MTL webinar series, then just email me, Heather, at fertilitynetworkuk.org and just ask for a webinar reminder for the MTL series. Um, we won't share your data with any other organisation and we'll only use it for the purpose stated. It will be kept for the duration of the 2019 webinar series and it can be removed at any time that you ask me to remove your name from the list. Um, only one request needs to be sent for the whole series. Um, I'd like to say one more thanks to Sarah. It really was great tonight, really practical, entertaining, and you really gave us your personal view on it all as well. Um, and good night to everyone else watching too. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. bye. Mm -hmm.